Hello, I'm Inking Trashmouth here. This video will be about the process of creating procedural bones for your model. Some things to note are this is not a tutorial for how to make a mod or model. You should already have that set up. And it is also not a tutorial on how to rig your bones. You should already have the bones you wish to use for procedurals ready, and your model should be working with Half-Life Model Viewer or the game you're working with. Anyway, first thing you want to do would be, when you decompile your model, you'll want to create a procedural bones file. This will give you a base to work off of, as well as give you a little bit of insight on how the system works. Once you've compiled your model, you should compile it again for Source Filmmaker. I've already done this before, but once you hit the compile button, you should get no errors and you should be compiling to the game's models folder so that your model ends up in the user mod section. For that, just head over to Steam and boot up Source Filmmaker. Once you've got Source Filmmaker open, you'll want to create a session and load a map. You can use any map in theory for this, but for convenience sake, we'll just use the TF Movie Stage.vsp. Alright, we have the stage loaded. I'm going to turn off progressive refinement and AO. And once you've got everything out of the way, you'll want to create an animation set for new model. Find your model in the user mod section. Mine is over here. And open it. Now, if your model has a portion trick, you'll notice that it will come out deformed. The process for making procedurals remains the same regardless of whether you're using the proportion trick or not, but some values may shift or change depending on whether or not you are using it. If you are using it, you want to right click your model, import a sequence. In the second drop down menu, choose the proportion sequence and slide the slider to the right. After that, your model should look fine now. Then we'll want to go to the motion editor and then drag the model out of the ground into a convenient spot. Once that's done, you can expand the list for your model and check the unknown category. Your procedural bones will usually show up here if they have not been collapsed. If they've been collapsed for whatever reason, you should make attachments for those specific bones or use defined bones to make sure that they are not being collapsed. And just to make sure it's working, I'll check the wrist. Moving around as intended, so it's good. So we'll move over to our VRD file. The first line, the helper, defines the name of the helper bone that we'll be using, its parent, its coordinate space, and then the control bone. The control bone dictates what will be rotating and causing our helper to move. Whenever the control bone reaches a certain point, the helper bone will also change to compensate. The base position is pretty self-explanatory. It's where the position values for your helper button are. Usually they'll be 0, 0, 0, but it, if you need to change it, then you should. Next is the trigger. First is the angle of influence. As the control button approaches this angle, that's when the helper button will start changing to compensate for the change. Next, we have the XYZ rotation values for the control bone. Once the control bone reaches these values, that's when the helper will change its values, which are here. These are also rotational values, and then we have the transformation values for the helper. Transformation values are a difference between the base position and the new position you want it to be at. So, how do we go around making these? The first trigger line, this entire thing here, is the rest position. 
This will be the default position when none of the other triggers are active, and should be just how the model is as it's loaded in. So, we'll open up the arms and grab the hand. We'll move down to the wrist since I already have it selected, and we'll take the base position first. You're gonna, you're gonna be looking at these two a lot while you're doing this for all your bones since these are the values you will need. In theory, you could use any modeling program for this, but Force Filmmaker is probably the most convenient way to do this since it'll give you the values exactly as Source needs them. So first, we're going to get the base position for the wrist. We'll select it here and check the position here. After that, we'll copy the values to our VRD file. And that'll give us our base position. Next, we'll move on to the rest position. First, we're going to get the control rotation, so we're going to move to the hand and grab the values from the rotation. Next, we're going to get the rotation values from the wrist. And make sure you're copying them exactly as they appear. And since this is the rest position for the translation value, we'll just put 0, 0, 0. So that'll give us our rest position for the wrist and the hand. Next, we'll want to move on to our first trigger. For the wrist, you usually want to have at least two additional triggers, one for the left twist and one for the right twist. So in advance, I'm going to add another trigger line. And we'll begin with, well, we'll see which. But first, we're going to Go to the rotate tool and move to the hand and rotate it about 90 degrees. See how it deforms pretty badly. It does not look good. But right now, we're going to grab the rotational values and copy them to our VRD file. Now we're going to move back to the wrist. And we're going to rotate it until it looks fascinating. Now, I should also advise that when you're grabbing the values, you press escape when you're in this menu so that to avoid making any changes, since usually if you do not press escape, it may send the bone to a not of number value or change the value from what you have. It. If this happens, just control Z and then continue moving on. And again, since we're not moving the wrist, we're going to make the translation value 0, 0, 0. Now we're going to undo until you turn the hand, and we're going to repeat for the other direction. Move to the wrist and rotate it as so 
for that. Copy of the values. And make the translation zero, zero, zero. All right. And now we will undo again. And that's our wrist. Once we compile this VRD file, with everything else done, of course, then whenever the wrist turns into these directions, whenever the hand turns into these directions, excuse me, then the wrist will automatically be turned to compensate. Now, for translation values, I'll be using the knee for this. So first, you want to get all the other values. You're going to get the position. And then to save time, we're going to grab the rotational values while we're here. Alright, now we're going to go to the calf. And get the value. And then set the translation to zero, zero, zero. All right, now we're going to rotate the calf until we have the bend we want. I usually bend the leg about this much, more, little more than 90 degrees, in case. And then we'll grab the rotation values. Next, we'll, we'll move and rotate the knee if you want to achieve the desired effect. Alright, first we're going to grab the rotation values, since they come up first. And now for the translation. Right here, we have different values for the position than we do from the base position. So for all of these, you're going to want to find the difference between your new position and your base position. You'll be plugging in those values for the translation value and not just the new position and you'll need a little bit of math knowledge for this. I do not have that knowledge, so I'll be using a calculator. Let me just put these down for references sake. Now the first value is pretty easy, I'm just going to subtract our new value, our old value from our new value, and that'll be my first translation. And then the third one, since it's going from zero to this, we'll just paste the new value there. Now we just have the Y. So. I'm going to switch to scientific. Alright, now we have 
that. So we'll this. And then subtract our old base position. up or down if you want to, but I'm just going to leave it as is. And that'll be our translation value. So now once the knee approaches the angle we specified, the knee will not only rotate, it will also move to the new position we specified. And that's about it really, you will just be repeating these for all the procedurals you need. Some things to keep in mind are these, just this part in particular, because one rule that they, one rule that procedural bones have is procedural bone must be a parent of the control, or they must share parent. If they don't, you'll likely want to change the coordinate space on the third value to whatever you're using. I'm not sure how well it works, but I've gotten around the error by doing that in the past. And I think that's about it. If you get any errors from your VRD, then probably ask about it in the comments or discussions, and I will see if I can help you out or anything. Don't forget to check out the Defer Mods Discord and Steam group for additional help. Because I am not the only one who knows about procedural bones, but we'll see what happens. I hope this video wasn't too much for you or too lengthy or boring, all sorts of that. And hopefully I will see you guys next time with probably a more organized video. Bye-bye.